Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss recent, very exciting discoveries, once again coming out of James Webb. And this new discovery takes us a little bit closer in helping us understand the mystery of globular clusters and the mystery of how the universe basically became more or less transparent, or essentially the mystery of reionization. With this new discovery coming out of this image you see right here, that though might resemble some kind of a line, is actually an ancient galaxy, one of the oldest ones we've seen so far, that as you can see right here, contains individual spherical objects inside. And though here you actually see two separate galaxies, it's really that lower galaxy, now referred to as the Cosmic Gems Arc, that we're going to be discussing in this video. But first, let's discuss the mysteries first, just to see how all of this connects. So pretty much in every galaxy we've seen so far, each of them contains these unusual objects we usually refer to as globular clusters. Spherical collections of stars with extremely high concentration of mass inside of them, usually containing hundreds of thousands or even millions of stars, and most importantly, very often almost as old as the universe. And these are usually the most massive and the largest star clusters that seem to be connected with the evolution of a typical galaxy, especially because generally, Larger and more massive galaxies will contain more globular clusters. But the thing is, even today, nobody actually has any idea how they formed. We know that there was a period in the universe when they seemed to be extremely common, and there was probably a period when all of them formed, but the actual details are still uncertain. There are some videos in the description though that do explore this concept a little bit more. But it's also believed that many of these objects very likely formed during the reionization period, or basically when the universe transformed from a somewhat foggy, difficult to see through environment to a much more transparent environment as it is today. And so there was always a suggestion that maybe globular clusters also played a major role in reionization of the universe, just like for example supermassive black holes and more importantly very powerful dwarf galaxies that seem to have played a major role in all of this. Once again, videos in the description talk about this more. But in order to try to answer some of these questions, we obviously have to find evidence somewhere out there. And that somewhere has to be extremely far away. And so back in 2018, the Hubble Space Telescope was actually able to identify an unusual gravitational lens created by a galaxy G0615. But because this was Hubble Space Telescope, unfortunately, it didn't really see much. Nevertheless, here it was quite clear that this galaxy was producing a really powerful gravitational lens, which naturally led to additional observations using the James Webb. And in essence, it seems to be producing the most magnified region we've seen so far, at least in the first 500 million years of the universe. And so essentially this, which is honestly barely visible, becomes this when enlarged and zoomed in and as seen by the James Webb Space Telescope. And in essence, what we're looking at are very ancient objects that basically formed 460 million years after the Big Bang, and very likely during the initial stages of reionization. But what exactly are these, and what are we actually looking at? Well, looks like these are not actually globular clusters, but there's something much more mysterious and something we've actually never seen before. These are extremely compact regions, millions of solar masses in mass, or basically just as massive as the central black hole in the Milky Way galaxy, but only approximately 3 to 4 light years across, tens and hundreds of times smaller than a typical global cluster. And they're also not very old, only about 50 million years old, suggesting that they just formed right after reionization started. And if you want to be more scientific, this is at a redshift of 10.2. And because here we have so much mass concentrated in such a small volume, the overall density here seems to be even higher than inside a typical global cluster. Or in other words, we have tens of thousands of solar masses per square parsec, or thousands and thousands of stars in a relatively small volume, basically equivalent to the solar system's Oort cloud. And here they found five such objects. Objects that seem to be basically baby globular clusters, or essentially proto-globular clusters, very likely containing some of the first stars in the universe, but basically each of them containing millions of stars held together by gravity. And because here we have so many stars in such a tiny region, with many of them very likely being very bright and very powerful stars, they probably played a major role in reionization as well. 
Or in other words, a lot of these very dense, very powerful clusters were also very likely responsible for reionizing neutral hydrogen, making the universe a little bit more transparent to a lot of high energy light. But interestingly, because we're seeing these objects right at the beginning of reionization, these are probably some of the first objects that became visible. A lot of other objects would be practically invisible simply because neutral hydrogen is basically acting like fog and obscures the view between us and those early stars. But even more interestingly, these are definitely objects that seem to no longer exist anywhere in the universe. As I mentioned, these are not actually globular clusters, but it's quite likely that they'll become them as they evolve over time and as they stabilize and expand in size. As a matter of fact, one of the main difference between globular clusters and these objects seems to be the amount of material they have to form new stars. A typical globular cluster is basically ancient and there's nothing going on here, no new stars forming, and all of these stars are billions of years old. Actually, over 13 billion years old, usually. Whereas inside these objects, the story is a little bit different. The stars are still very young, there's a lot of gas everywhere, and they're all still forming stars, producing tremendous amounts of energy. But because of the proximity of these objects, or basically because stars here are so close together, the researchers behind the study believe that all of this might result in some really unusual stars, or some other unusual massive objects we can't imagine. But the obvious question here is, how exactly would something like this even form? In order to form such extreme objects, these galaxies would have to have a huge amount of gas in a lot of different super dense environments that would then have to stabilize itself for millions of years in order to start forming these super active star regions. And we actually don't see anything like this in the modern universe. Which once again highlights how extremely different and extremely unusual the early universe was. But these are just some of the more preliminary discoveries and the researchers behind the study are now going to be conducting the observations in other frequencies just so we can discover the physical properties of these objects and potentially reconstruct their appearance. Thus figuring out exactly what effects they had on all of the gas around them and of course on the galaxy where these objects are growing. But the overall conclusion so far is that because of the sheer density and power of these objects, they definitely played a role in reionization and eventually evolved into globular clusters that would at some point join a much more massive galaxy orbiting around it just like so many other clusters orbit around the Milky Way. Here we have approximately 150, but as I mentioned, some of the more massive galaxies would actually have over a thousand. But even though these are super exciting discoveries, they still don't really solve the mystery of globular clusters and don't really explain how they formed why they formed, and I guess more importantly, why none of them seem to form anymore. All of these objects are pretty much the same age, suggesting that they all formed in that early period and never formed again afterwards. With most galaxies just forming open clusters now, the concept you can learn more about in one of the recent videos in the description. But I guess at least for now that's kind of all we have. Once there are some additional discoveries from the James Webb, or something else is discovered about these objects, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.